This video is sponsored by Parabellum Games. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome back to Eons of Battle and welcome back to Other Games April, the month where we take a look at miniatures from war games other than that big one I can't quite think of the name of. I think it starts with a games? But anyhow, today I wanna to tackle my largest pile of shame. And largest because these models are physically massive, standing in at a 38 millimeter scale. These models are from Conquest, the last argument of kings, which is a mouthful. From here on out, I'll be referring to the game by its official acronym, CLAC. And this faction that I have collected is called the Old Dominion. Basically, the undead mummified Byzantine Empire. This faction is made up of the rank and file legionaries, little zombie spear dudes. We have the leader, the mounted Stratagos, led by his wonderful Cataphracti, the super powerful, super fast horseman. We have cultists in the form of the Curies, the mighty Caryatids, statues brought to unholy life by being soaked in the blood of a god, and speaking of soaked in the blood of the god, the mighty bone golems, literally the foundation of temples brought to life to wreak havoc on the battlefield. This is an army of zombie mummies, and I am very excited to paint it up, and I have absolutely no idea how long this is gonna take. I've never painted models in this scale before, but I have a feeling they're gonna paint up pretty quick. I'm gonna be making liberal use of things like speed paint and contrast paint, lots and lots of washes, and who knows? I might even do a little slap chopping. My goal is to end up with a fairly bright, saturated army. And Clack is kind of a desaturated, grim game, but I'm thinking the lighting in my basement is pretty grim, so I want these guys nice and bright to compensate for that. I need to keep track of my time to see just how long this army takes, and if I had to guesstimate a number, I would say... Carry the one, multiply by two... I'm gonna say about 16 hours. 16 hours to have this entire army done. And also, the story of how the Old Dominion became the undead faction of Clack is an epic story. And I think a little later on I'll share that story, but now it is time to get to work. I started my clock and filled my airbrush with primer. Priming is always a big pain in the butt doing whole armies all at once, but it is crucial to get paint on every surface, and it does have an element of fun. It turns the minis from plastic toys into real-life heroes, warriors, and monsters. In small scale. Now the gray primer is still a little on the dark side, so I dry brushed every model with white paint. Conquest minis are on a larger scale than I'm used to working in, and they take dry brushing beautifully. It did just what I wanted, bringing out every detail. A good base coat for everything. That was a lot of dry brushing. <laughs> but it does look pretty good. I've never really done proper slap chop, and I still haven't. You're technically supposed to start with a black prime, and I didn't, but I am excited to see where it goes from here but about four hours of priming and dry brushing wasn't much fun, so I kind of want to eat dessert first. And I'm going to start with these karyatids. These animated statues almost look done now with just the dry brushing, but I want to add some color through tinting. I took a light blue speed paint and a dark blue speed paint to make the top of each stone light and the bottoms dark and contrasty. Then I took a black speed paint and I worked it into the folds of the cloth and the cracks and blemishes of the stone to make them even more interesting. Then came the fun part, making the statues look old and weathered. I took yellow speed paint and glazed this really thinned down randomly onto the statue. This changed the cold blues into greens and browns and added a lot of variety, making the stone more interesting. With the statues done, I put a gray over the bow using black to shade again, letting the original primer and slap chop show through. Then, for the magical energies that animate these statues, the box art suggests black smoke, and other players have chosen other colors for the magic, but I think blood would look cool. I painted some Army Painter Speed Paint Red all over the wispy tendrils of smoke, and it definitely made for a more macabre and sinister look. I even splattered a little extra blood onto the stone, and what let me do this is what makes Army Painter Speed Paint great, the reactivation. Any splatter I didn't like, I could just wipe away, letting me get everything perfect. Then, just to be a little bit more creepy, I painted some bloody eyes. These hulking warriors are very nasty. The karyatids are done. Really, slap chop and speed paint was the perfect thing to do on these lovely large statues, so I wanna see just how good the slap chopping works on the little rank and file guys. Checking the time, it looks like we're at six hours, 23 minutes and 50 seconds, so the karyatids took about two hours. Let's see how long all of these legionaries take. I put some warm yellow oranges over the armor of these Byzantine duders, and one thing I discovered on the Karyatids is to always use at least two colors of speed paint for a base coat. They naturally mix together and make a much more interesting final product, and it doesn't take any extra effort. Orange yellow on top and dark red on the bottoms. 
Now the armor is tinted, but it's too clean. I put some Vallejo Verdigris wash over almost all the armor. A lot of this will evaporate away, but what remains will give the armor its ancient look. The final touch to this bronzy coppery metal is a silver dry brushing to represent the chips and scuffs the armor has gotten over the centuries of battle. Eons of battle, you could say. With the armor taken care of, it's time to pick out everything else. The clothing, feathers, and handles of the spears all got red plus dark red, and a little bit of exposed skin got purple. And that is a finished duder. It's a lot of steps to get one of these guys finished, but it's a lot of really easy steps. I assembly lined the rest of them, working one color at a time, and they were a joy to paint. Which is good, because I'm gonna need to paint a lot of these guys. The mighty undead spearmen, they know no fear in battle because they know they cannot die. They're already dead. All 12 legionaries took a little bit under two hours to paint, which is really exciting for two reasons. Number one, because I'm gonna have to paint a lot more of these guys, and that is not bad at all. And I might actually get this army done in or under my 16 hour estimation. I wanna keep this ball rolling and I'm gonna go right into the Curies. The Curies are the rank and file of the more magical half of the Dominion. They are cursed cultists rising out of pillars of smoke, which was a fun effect to pull off. I base coated this, continuing my experiment with using combinations of colors for base coating. I painted a gray on the bottom, a black in the middle, and a brown on top, working quickly. While everything was still wet, it was easy to blend them all together into a lovely gradient. The flesh got painted a Slim Jim red with a drop of sickly green here and there to add some variety to it. Then it was time for their magical weapons. I painted them in a classic fire effect, but using speed paint so the gray and white undercoat showed through. I did yellow, orange, red, and then black, quickly working through these colors and then blending them together. It's important to have a lot of yellow, which is the hottest parts, and a lot of black, the smoke coming off of the fire, to really sell the effect. I have some of that brand new speed paint metallics, and I threw these over the chains at their waists. It's a decent paint, it looks kind of like gunmetal with a black wash over it when it dries. It's an interesting product, I'll have to do some more experimenting with it to see if it can do any really cool special effects. I had the same number of Curies as Legionaries, but they took even less time to paint. They are 100% speed paint, so I don't even have to take any breaks to get the Verdigris wash or dry brushing figured out. I don't even have to wait for anything to dry as I wet blended all the layers together. In just a short while, they were done. The armies of the old Dominion are coming to life, well back to life, before my very eyes. The story and lore of the old Dominion and conquest in general is an epic tale. In the world of Ia, an ancient tribe of humans came across a powerful force that they came to worship. And as they worshipped it, it grew in power and form and became a god, Haslia, the god of man. He granted gifts and miracles to his people and they grew into a mighty civilization. But eventually, the Dominion outgrew their old god, who could not answer their prayers as fast as they were being asked for. And the now massive Dominion Empire decided that for their society to continue to evolve and prosper, they needed to be rid of their old deity. And so they devised a plan to kill Haslia. All their greatest sorcerers prepared for battle and they discovered that they could, in fact, kill gods. But they also learned that although gods can be killed, they cannot die. Transformed from the god of man into the undead god of man, Haslia struck down all those who turned their backs on him in one cosmic blast, and then used his new powers to resurrect all those who had been loyal to him, granting them the same living death that had been forced on him. And that is how you get an undead empire. Every member of the Old Dominion is an ancient zombie. And there are still fresh cultists pouring in, and those are the Kiris. All 12 Kiris took well under two hours to complete. I am currently sitting at nine hours, 49 minutes, and 57 seconds. I think I am more than on track to finish in my 16 hour idea I just pulled out of my head. I have seven models left, so I have almost an hour to finish every single miniature. And now it's time for the horsies. These models are huge, a squad of dreadnought-sized horsies. I started with some light gray on the horse's armor and a dark gray on the bottoms. This didn't get as dark as I wanted it to, so I went over these areas with black that I feathered in using water. Contrast is the thing that makes Conquest minis look good. For the riders, I painted these guys with the same recipe I created for the Legionaries, with all warm tones, some blue-green verdigris, and a dry brushing of silver. I put an orangey red over the horsey's armor to add some warmth to represent the centuries of dust and dirt that has built up, and a silver dry brushing over everything. Now on the horse's reins and leather parts, I made a mistake of painting these with a leather colored speed paint, an easy mistake to make. It's fine, but it's a little flat looking. On the other two, I used a tan and leather paint. It takes at least two colors of speed paint to get an effective base coat I am discovering with this project. And the horsey on the left looks way better in my opinion. To finish these suckers up, the cloth got redded using two reds, a light and a dark, and the banner got the same treatment. And the dry, dusty, horsey bones that were sticking through got a bone-colored speed paint. The mounted toy are finished, and I am mostly satisfied with them. I've kind of decided to give myself a challenge to see just how far I can push speed paints. 
Because during the Cataphract toy, I really wanted to reach for my acrylics, but right now I want to see just how far I can push speed paints. I'm definitely going to buy more Cataphract toys, so I'm going to get to run that experiment. But right now, speed paints only. I am at 13 hours and eight minutes, so I am still well on track to get this army done. And now it is time for the bone golems. These big ol' boners are huge hulking things, and they already look pretty good with just the base white dry brushing. And they are baseball sized piles of junk, so it's just going to be picking out all the different things they are made of one by one. I started with all the stone parts, painting them just like I did the karyatids, with a light blue gray transitioning to darker blue gray, and then a little black to shadow, and my favorite, a light yellow green to change the colors and make the stone look old and sickly. Then it was time for the bones. So many bones. Who would have thought the bone golems would have so many bones in them? Probably the bones of all those who do not worship Hazlia, the god of man. Or maybe they're the bones of the faithful, getting one less chance to do their deity proud. Anything metal got the same treatment as the legionaries, with warm oranges, reds, verdigris, and some silver dry brushing. And a dark red and light red on all the cloth. I didn't really plan anything out for this project, but my color palette ended up being orange, red, and blue. I should one day actually come up with a plan going into projects like these, but there is a special magic to just figuring stuff out along the way. The boner golems are done, and I am loving this Army Painter Speed Paint Challenge I've sort of given myself. It's a little bit of an experiment. I've never really painted this way before, but I am really having a good time. Part of that is actually, let me show you guys the brushes I've been using for this project. Boom, the actual definition of garbage. And yet, the models are turning out pretty darn good. I'm using these brushes, even though they're all screwed up, they actually hold a ton of liquid, which is perfect for globbing speed paint all over the models. Although speaking of globbing, now is the final test. I wanna see just how good I can make the hero look. I have over an hour left to pour into this mounted Strigoi. I painted his horsey armor when I was working on the other horses, so now it's all about the dude. I loaded up my palette with some more speed paints and I started globbing it on. I mixed every color 50-50 with speed paint medium. I wanted to have a lot of control, so applying thin layers and letting them dry let me see how it looked so I could decide if I needed to apply more layers. This guy is the general of my army, leading charges with a cataphract toy, and his cape made of lion was particularly fun to paint. And you know what else is fun to paint? That's right, the terrain from our Patreon. We make monthly terrain packs, this week is the last week to get the Twisted Train Station, a devilish depot, perfect for skirmish games like Malifaux, Kill Team, or anything else you can think of. The speed paint did a good job. I can't decide if I love the speed paint for careful work like this or not. It does a decent job. I think what it might be best at is laying down a base and then coming back with acrylics. Speed paint and contrast paint tints and pools in the recesses and makes these areas nice and dark, but you don't have a lot of control. Acrylics give you nothing but control, but that means everything takes forever. I like how the Stratagos looks, but there are a few places I wouldn't mind coming back to and cleaning up. And that's the great thing about paint. It's an additive process. I could paint this guy 100 times if I wanted to, but right now I just want to get him done and ready for the tabletop. For the bases, I left these for last, partly because I didn't know how I was going to paint them and partly because they're all identical. I used a nice saturated yellow with a drop here and there of red-brown. My goal was a bright saturated zombie army and I think I definitely succeeded. Every single one of these miniatures is finished, based and painted. I am currently at 15 hours, 57 minutes, and 11 seconds. I don't know how, but my estimation was almost exactly right. However, I am gonna go over time just a little bit because Conquest uses movement trays. So I gotta get all these movement trays done. And I have a special little thing I wanna try out. I found these little double stick metal plates on Amazon and paired with some thin magnets, these should hold my minis down nicely. I smoothed out the bottom of my bases with a Dremel tool and then glued down my magnets. With the magnets in place, I gave these movement trays the same basing colors I did for all my minis, finishing them off with a black base rim and just about all my grass tufts. My Empire of the Damned is ready for war. These magnets aren't particularly impressive, but they do a decent job of actually holding the bases onto the movement trays. And speaking of movement trays, I think movement trays are actually kind of a neat thing in miniature wargaming because it takes advantage of one of the fundamental things about miniatures games. It's the thing that separates miniatures games from any other type of board game. And that is positioning. Rank and Flank has kind of gone out of fashion in miniature war games. Now it's reserved mostly for Napoleonic war games and Mantix Kings of War. Games Workshop even killed their Rank and Flank game, but Conquest is bringing sexy back. Every unit can perform marches with the total length measured in inches, moving the whole block in straight lines. It costs double the movement distance to move sideways and backwards. Any pivoting can be done at any time, keeping track of the distance moved and including it in the overall move distance. This video is sponsored by Parabellum Games, makers of the game Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings, and I love the attitude of this company. They are in it to win it. Updated rules, constant new model releases, 
I got a chance to talk to the game's creator, and when I asked him how many ideas he had for new factions, he said he had 20 right off the dome, and that doesn't even include sub-factions. Conquest currently has seven factions, and those factions are... The Hundred Kingdoms, the plucky and tenacious humans fighting for survival. The Spires, the bio-organic clones of an extraterrestrial civilization. The Nords, seafaring warriors from the north, a culture forged in ice and steel. The Dwaigom, the firstborn children of war, and the rebellious creations of the dragons. The Wardrun, the fledgling civilization of Saurus riding giant predators. The city-state, made from the knowledge that escaped the destruction of the Old Dominion. And you know all about the Old Dominion. This army painted up really, really quick, in one day, in one really, really long day, but now I have a force of undead Byzantine warriors to do battle with, and I'm gonna have to expand this. I want an entire empire, an undead empire, and I'm gonna have to get Nick really working on his faction so that we can finally start to battle it out in rank and flank glory. Thanks for watching.